the answer man, John Heinfeld. Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. The idea being that uh, even though for most of the year the world seems to be against you, there's two days of the year when it's actually on your side. So best to take your shot then. Yeah. Right, uh, Jeff Daniels. You know, without um, without Jeff Daniels, I would still probably just be a guy that wrote a pretty good script. Um, you know, at every step in the, in the process, um, this is true for anyone, like whatever job you get, somebody gave it to you, right? Somebody like believed in you and took a shot on you. And uh, once Jeff said that he would do it, then it really makes it appealing to other actors. They're like, well, I'd like to be in a scene with Jeff. Um, but really it was like, you know, him and Lauren were like within days of each other. And she's the, uh, she's the only actress that I, uh, that I, that I met with. Yeah, did you have a question? No. Yeah, go ahead. What did your original title mean? The Dream of the Romans? Lovely title, isn't it? <laughs> um, there's a scene, actually, in, in the script that took place after um, Arlen and Elizabeth sort of reconcile on, on the sidewalk there at the end, um, in which Chris, we see him at an AA meeting, and he sort of gives this uh, wistful, philosophic um, take on our experience. Um, and while great to read, um, and performed beautifully, by, by Lou, um, as, as you pointed out, like the chemistry between Jeff and Lauren was just like so fantastic that like at that point in the movie, like I don't care about your book, I don't care about I don't care about anything. Like I just need for you guys to be together, you know. And then once they were, I we were done, you know. I screened it both ways. We're like, yeah, I don't miss it. So then I called it Arlen Faber at Sundance, and then Magnolia picked it up, and they're like, mm, the answer man. I'm like, fine. <laughs> whatever, whatever you say. What's your favorite? It's still under Arlen Faber on IMDb, by the way. What's that? It's still under Ar Ar Arlen Faber on IMDb, by the way. Oh, What's yeah, you? IMDb. Look at IMDb. I've never done anything in my life. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. The nuance is that you were able to bring out in various scenes in the actors, the under acting, was some of what, for me, strong, strong film book. I don't miss a film at the risk. That, for me, made the film three or four steps better than it might have been. The nuance is that you caught the little boy didn't have trouble nuancing. He was under, under acting. But the, the way you caught them in certain scenes, the eye movement, the body <laughs> language, 80% unspoken, you did a very, very special job with that nuance. I mean, that was some of the strongest part of making it a much higher level film than it might have been done as entertainment. So I thank you for that. Well, thank you very much for your, your kind words. Um, well, thank you. You know, that's, if, uh, uh, that's credit that I would have to share, of course, with the actors. You know, uh, all of us were charged with the, uh, the, the job of, of walking that line between sentiment um, but not sentimentality. You know, uh, touching but not schmaltzy, right? Um, and it's 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 tough, but you know, when you're lucky enough to work with people like that, who have such great chops, um, it's uh, well, it was just lovely. So thank you. Yeah, go ahead. Was the story always set in Philadelphia? Just go, just because you know, like just at home writing it. I'm like, you know, Arlen lives in Pacific Heights. <laughs> Um, but it didn't really matter so much. It didn't have to, it wasn't San Francisco specific, you know, it wasn't like, they go to the Golden Gate Bridge, you know. Um, exterior street is exterior street. But um, for me, for his character, like there's only so many places that someone like Arlen could and would live. You don't know this, but me and God sold 92 million copies. He's incredibly rich, 
Um, and so where could he go that would be interesting to him? Like where could he go and get like a perfect espresso? Right? Where could he where could he blend in? Where could he be anonymous? Where would it be interesting to him? Um, and ta da. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, how we work with the little boy, uh, Max Antisel. He's uh, he's from uh, across the bridge. What is that, Jersey? Yeah, yeah. Jersey. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Um, he's extraordinary, you know. And we um, we had uh, a wonderful casting director here in, in Philadelphia, Diane Harry, and then also, you know, back up uh, what? <laughs> and also. Uh, worked with uh, my cast and director in Los Angeles, and we looked for kids in LA, in Philadelphia, in New York, right? They had open calls. It was, I didn't have to participate in that. Um, they just sent me DVDs. And it came down to uh, Max, who had basically done a play that seven people saw somewhere, you know what I mean? Um, and another kid who had done a lot of film work. And uh, I really fought for, uh, for Max because he was just, um, he was extraordinary. You know, he was always just being a kid. He was a kid who could take direction. Um, and that two week scene, man, that's like, boy, if you don't get that right, it just sucks, you know? And he was just, again, he got uh, very, very lucky. Yeah, go ahead and the, the scarf around your neck. I did, I did write it. Um, the question is, did Arlen, did I perceive Arlen as having any kind of traditional religious background? Um, you know, I would say no. I'd say, if anything, you know, before he wrote the book, he's, you know, what you might call like a, you know, an Easter Christian. Um, and um, a couple things, like uh, on, you know, 9-11, not to be like a huge bummer, but um, I, you know, I said, I have to go to the ocean, <laughs> which I never say. And we drove out to the beach, and I walked into the water, like up to my chest, and I just let, like, whoever might be up there have it. I was so pissed, you know? And I thought, well, what if you couldn't come back from that? Right? What if you were angry with a God you didn't have? Like, so that's such a strange in-between place to be. Like, if you don't have a God, then who are you mad at? And if you are mad, then why can't you? You know what I mean? Um, and I think that what I, what I love the most about Arlen, my, my favorite quality of his, aside from perfect comic timing, <laughs> um, is that he's, he's a seeker, you know? He doesn't stop looking for the answers. I don't, I don't know about you, but like, it doesn't take much for me to quit. I'm like, I signed up for the gym, you know, and they're like, fuck the gym. <laughs> for 20 years, right? For 20 years, Arlen has like not stopped looking for some solace, some relief, some answer, some connection, and that is admirable. Um, and I love that he doesn't know that about himself. Way in the back there, blonde hair. Yeah, well, thanks. Um, that's important to me. I like uh, I like kids. I like uh, I have kids, and I like them. And um, I taught improv to kids for five years, um, and uh, they're they're people. Like he says, they're just like short, highly emotional people who don't know anything, you know. Um, and I, I hate the way that they talk in uh, a lot of TV shows and, and movies. Um, same thing with uh, with Chris's dad. You know, like I've seen the angry, drunk, terrible guy, and it's like, yeah, this guy's a nice guy. He loves his son. He just can't stop drinking. That's all. Last question. All right, first, uh, so let me say that uh, I was very impressed with the comic timing of the script because, you know, a lot of these uh, romantic comedies that, 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 that I usually see kind of start very funny, but then kind of, you know, mellow down and just get really overbearingly dramatic. So I like how you've kept up the, uh, the timing that even Thank the you. final script speech didn't come over Barry. Uh, the, the question I wanted to get to is, because all these are very uh, uh, amazing characters, this may be a tough question. 
How much of yourself do you think you put into maybe one or two of these characters? Like your own beliefs, your own kind of... Uh... Uh, the question is how much of myself that I put into these characters. I would say, oh, you know, as much of myself as, as would fit. Um, I, you know, I poured everything that I had into this. Like, I love movie monsters. Um, I just went and picked up all those monsters from storage here in Philly yesterday. Um, I've, I've read a lot of those books, like Consciousness Without an Object is impenetrable. Um, I, uh, I, I, love, I love coffee. I do say that it's like liquid angels. Like, there isn't anything really that, like, isn't my personal... I thought I was just writing this for myself. I'm like, well, I'll like it and my family will like it. But somehow, in personalizing it to that degree, it, it found a connection with a great, a great many people. Um, uh, yeah, and as far as his speech at the end, you know, like, I mean, that's how I feel, man. Like, maybe I'm part of some divine plan, but he sure as hell didn't let me in on it. So, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's all 100% emotionally true. So, I guess that's all the time that we have. Could you um, give a little shout out to the man who owns the real book trader who was so generous with his Where is he? Store. I know him. Peter. Stand up. Yeah. He's a well-reviewed